In 1866, when the telegraph cable first links the old world with the new, he is already at play and at work in the paddy fields of Bali. When Lindbergh is making his historic transatlantic flight, he has become a revered old master in the employ of the island princes. When Neil Armstrong sets foot on the moon, he is just entering into his final creative decade as the single most important Balinese artist of the century. And in 1977, at the age of 116, Igusti Nyoman Lempat is still alive and well. With his son, Igusti Made Samu, Lempard speaks of the sage who advised him in his youth that he would lead a long and a fulfilled life. His fingernails show that he does no manual labor. But those on his creative hand are kept short. On April the 25th, 1978, Lempard is to set out on the hazardous journey across the bridge of death, back to the place where all things originate. temple bell tolls his passing. It calls the villagers to the aid of his family. Together they must prepare the body for the cycle of rituals that will eventually lead to one of the world's most impressive death rites, the Balinese cremation. Religion here is a dynamic blending of Hindu Buddhism and ancient Indonesian animism. They make clear distinctions between the material body, the soul, and a third element, which we might call the astral being. This is composed of several subtle and immaterial elements that form the being. The soul and the astral being are the eternal elements that continue into future incarnations. The return to the realm of ancestors is but a transitional phase, a regeneration, before reincarnation within the same family. The purification of his body is supervised by the village priest healer and family friend. The corpse is anointed with a sweet-smelling balm of ground blossoms, rice flour and egg yolk, a powerful symbol of regeneration. Family and friends bathe him with holy water. Although the Balinese know birth and death to be times when evil forces can threaten the living, they accept it as their duty to personally prepare the body of a loved one. They regard the Western habit of assigning this task to a professional as barbaric. Mirrors in the eyes assure clear vision in the next incarnation. A metal comb on the mouth guarantees strong, sharp teeth. And a ruby ring on the tongue promises eloquent speech. Each of his chakras, the power points that tie his astral being together, are adorned with offerings. Once the body is wrapped and laid out to await cremation, attention will concentrate on preparing for the journey of the astral being and the soul. A high priest of the most elevated caste calls the Godhead, the supreme deity, into his own being. Through secret formulas of hand, voice and heart, he prepares holy water. Family and friends extend their blessings.
The Balinese do not grieve unnecessarily over death. For them, this life is no more than one adventure in a continuous cycle of incarnation. He says that he was reincarnated on this earth to create what the gods direct. He is happy to make whatever people with pure heart request. But most important to him are cremation towers that transport souls of the dead to the other world and cremation bulls to make the journey a smooth one. Preparations have started on Lempard's own cremation bull. The bull's torso is a bamboo basket in which his corpse will be placed for the burning. The house stands on the main street of Ubud. Renowned for its artists, Ubud is now a tourist attraction. Lempard's grandson works on, undisturbed by the comings and goings. These blocks of wood will, over the next 20 days, be transformed into striking masks of supernatural beings. They will adorn a tower which will carry Lempard's body to the place of cremation. This one will become Boma, a powerful guardian figure seen on all temple gateways in Bali. This Boma was carved by Lempard in the 1920s. Lempard's son, Made Samung, brings a white cloth to be inscribed by the local priest. This temple's annual festival was being held at the time of his death. The evening before he died, he sent his daughter here to give offerings. She had no idea that he was notifying the gods of his intended passing. The priest draws symbols of the various elements that make up Lempard's astral being. The shroud will later be placed on his body and will accompany it to cremation. The body is only a corpse. The spiritual being is now free to wander. Without this cloth, the spiritual being would break up, get lost, and never reach its proper place. 